Yo, what's poppin' guys? You got your boy Nandre here. Welcome to another video. So for this video, we're gonna be talking about some of the cards that are in Dawnbreak Night Red, uh, Dawnbreak Night Edge. I'm sorry about that. Pretty tuny name, but heh, <laughs> whatever. Who's, who's complaining? Alright, so, I haven't really been, like, posting any, any, like, videos or anything like that. Like, just cause, like, the, the Shadow Rise meta game, like, it, it's, it's, it's been in, uh, it's seen better days, basically. It's seen better days, and, like, I don't, I know, like, a lot of you guys, yes, more so prefer me to actually play games than you prefer to, like, have me, like, theory craft or whatever. Um, which unfortunately that's, that's basically what this video is going to be, uh, yeah, that's basically what this particular video is going to be, is just me talking about, like, the cards that are coming out and just, like, giving, giving, like, my thoughts on them. But I do plan to, like, have more gameplay soon. Um, I've also started streaming, for, for those of you who are wondering, uh, I'm going to have, like, stop at the stream at some point. I'll, pro I'll probably, like, be alternating between weeks where I stream and weeks where I, where I work on doing YouTube stuff, and the, the most of this month will probably be, like, YouTube stuff, possibly. Um, alright, anyway, without further ado... So for those of you who don't know, like set eight will be coming out soon. It'll be coming out at the end of the month on the twenty eighth. So so far they've printed, they've like revealed a lot of cards, including the four, two, sorry, one of the force legendaries, two of the shadow legendaries. I believe one of the sword legendaries, although I don't know if it's here already. I don't, I don't think it is though, which is unfortunate, but that's fine. We'll make do. And well, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna talk about each of the cards that are, that are so far on this list. When the list up, updates, I'll go ahead and probably talk about it. I'll go ahead and probably talk about them more. Um, or, or I might just like talk about them on stream like I did last time. If I do, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll try to, I'll try to record a video for that. Anyway, without further ado, we'll go ahead and start off with the first card, Yggdrasil. Or, you know, I, I still haven't figured out how to pronounce that. Or I, I used to at one point, but I don't remember anymore. Anyway, so, she's a sub midnight 2 6 that evolves into a 4 8, so you know, full stats and Evo. Unevolved, she has a drain, and then Fanfare choose pe put either Blessings of Creation or Wrath of Nature into your hand. Blessings of Creation is, is a zero cost, draw two cards, uh, and then enhance two, add two to the number of cards played this turn. So this card is actually really cool. I like this card a lot. Um, Blessings of Creation, like, like it'll probably see a, a little bit more play in, like, say, Roach and, like, Unlimited or whatever, but it's still a really good, it's still a really cool card, just because, like, it does things that Forest wants, like, like, for, like Forest wants, like, card draw that's, like, free. They also want to, you know, be, be able to, like, have things that, that increase the number of cards played this turn for, like, for some of their, like, combos or whatever, like, for example, you can use Blessings of Creation, uh, pay, pay the Enhance to them, like, play Beetle Warrior or whatever, and the Beetle Warrior is, like, good to go, or, or you can just, like, use it, like, by itself, and also be fine, like, for example, a play you can make is you can actually go... Blessings of Creation for well, or, well, sorry, well, you, you wouldn't be able to play it for zero, obviously, because because they, they, they enhance the screw you for, but um, but like for example, you could go Blessings of Creation into Double Beetle Warrior, and then and they could like do things with that, and that'd be like pre pretty sick, but yeah. But the card still is very, very good, just because it's a zero cost, and zero costs are always broken. Well, they're usually broken, and in this case, you get, you get to draw two cards, and that's very, very strong. The second one is Wrath of Nature. Sorry about that. So this is one, this is the one that, that, that most people are talking about. Wrath of Nature is zero mana. Give an ally, give an, yeah, give an ally follower plus one plus zero and rush, and then enhance four. Give all ally followers storm. So this card is again pretty sick. Uh, one of the one of the comments that people are thinking about with this card thus far is to is is you can use it with Wolf to finally give an uh, anomaly the the the, for, the forest legend the uh, the forest legend that couldn't uh, you you can you finally you know give motion give motion to the motionless and make that card a card that can actually win the game because it'll get because you can use it to get storm and then you can go ahead and win. Now this is like a, a three step combo and your opponent will see it coming and this still doesn't actually uh, actually address the answer of, oh, how, how do you get past wards? But, but this is still a very, very funny combo to do. I, I, I assure you that, so, that someone at some point will lose this combo, that's gonna be very, very funny. Um, but basically what you do is you go ahead and you play you play your uh, Yggdrasil on seven, play Wolf on eight, have, hopefully have the Wolf be able to be able to perfectly suicide, get get the Force Anomaly to your hand, then go ahead and if they don't and if they ever don't have a word, you go ahead and you play Anomaly, then, then you go ahead and play play the Enhanced Spore of this card, and then just go ahead and smack them in the face and kill them. It's pretty funny. I cannot wait for, for someone to die to it. I'm pretty sure I will probably I will probably be among the first to die in this combo. Next card is oh but yeah, uh, Yager still is, is pretty good. Uh, I, I definitely think she'll see play just because she's, she's she's one of those cards. She's one of those cards like it gives you a lot of options, which, which is the point of this expansion. It just gives you more options. Um, but in particular, she she has very very strong options, so she'll see play. All right, so 
already talked about this card on my stream, Fashionista Nel Nelcha. Uh, I think this card is pretty good, although I don't know if this card will see play. What I mean by that is that, like, both of its effects are very, very strong, and the stat line of the card itself is very, very strong, but the issue is that, like, I don't I don't particularly foresee, like, a deck that this can go into. However, I also don't play Forest Craft, so that's also a thing there, so... But the, but both the effects are very, very strong, just because, like, you can use Demon, Demon Chest in particular, plus a combination of Water Brambles to kill any creature in the game. Well, almost any creature in the game, with the exception of, like, I feel like any shocks from creatures. But, uh, but that's very, very strong. And they can use the, the Angel's Chest in order to power, in order to power up things like, say, Beetle Warrior. Again, that's very, very strong. Or, or even just power up things like, say, I don't know, like, um, or even just use it to, to make things like, say, to make, to make things like, say, your fairies a little bit beefier. Or you can use it with, uh, with Fita, the the TPP two two that that draws draws cards every time her her HP or attack or attack stat gets buffed. Next card is Staff of Whirlwinds from Maroon. So this is a five mana deal three to an enemy follower and then deal one to all enemies. So this is basically a a Breath of Salamander that also does space. However, is weaker than Breath of Salamander, but the idea is, is that they're supposed to play they're supposed to play Mysteria in order to power this up because Mysteria makes, mo makes every single part of this effect stack. So if you've played two Mysterias, this now becomes deal five to an deal five to, to an enemy caller, then then deal three to, to everything else. So this becomes like super breath of Slavener because this can also deal face. Now the other issue with this card is that like even without that, like it's still really good just because like it's still something else that they can pick up they can pick up off your Oz and have that be great. So I definitely think this card is to play, but but however, primarily in, in decks are seeing, uh, in decks are either playing Oz or decks that are playing Mysteria. Will he play outside of that? I don't think so. Maybe maybe in Daria, but well, like it seems really expensive for Daria as well, so probably not. Next card is Dragon Cleaver Roy. So this card is is one of the cards I'm really excited for because like the art is sick. Like like all three of these artworks are just nice. All right. So, unevolved, it's spam for a cheese, put either a Dragon Life Blade or a Dragon Strife Blade into your hand. So, it's a 2 mana 2, sorry, it's a 3 mana 2 2, and then uh, evolves into a full force, so it's already pretty good stats. Dragon Life Blade is a ga again an empty playpoint orb, but you don't not notice that you don't draw, that's actually, that's actually very important, we'll talk about it shortly. And then Dragon Strife Blade, which is deal 3 damage to an enemy follower. If that follower is a Dragoncraft follower, deal 6 damage to that again. All, all, all three of these are very, very important. So with Roy, what you'll notice is that he's not too, is that he's not too mad. This is good. The reason why I like this is because like this kind of hedges. Right now, a lot of people complain about like, oh, Dragon is broken going first, or uh, sorry, he's like broken going, I believe first or whatever. And Dragon players will tell you that, that they actually that a lot of them prefer going second. Um, but this is nice because it gives you a nice hedge. Like you're gonna want to play Roy where, where you're going first, and you're gonna want to go ahead and play Ayala where you're going second uh, uh, in order to get your ramp. Uh, that's gonna be a very very big deal. Now, additionally, you can uh, you can actually you can actually play Roy going second, and then I'll and also have the Isla as well, and then, and then just like be right up at seven mana on turn four, or or possibly even eight mana if you've already ramped it. But however, you'll have no cards in hand, which is a very very big deal, which we'll talk about shortly. And then of course, the other the Dragon Strike Blade is also really good too. Now. The nice thing about Dragon Life Blade is that it doesn't draw is that it doesn't draw your cards unlike uh unlike Oracle. So you might not always pick this. You might you might you might sometimes pick the Dragon Strike Blade. The reason why Dragon Strike Blade is really good, just because it's a two mana deal three to an enemy follower, and then if that follower is a Dragon Hat follower, deal six damage instead. That's actually a very, very big deal, because like um one of the things that, that comes up sometimes is that you do actually is that you do actually play it play a dragon mirrors a lot. And being able to have two uh, to have a two mana deal six, that's pretty ridiculous. Like, I I guess really like uh, just, just that's just really, really good. Like it, it's, it's really good, just like just like Jawbreaker or sort of that, like in that, in that kind of matchup. Like for example, you can do Dragon Strike Blade plus a Robbers to deal up to nine damage to a unit. Like so, for example, assuming he, assuming he was still in this format uh, after this set came out. You could actually go a Rob Rose plus. Well, I, I lied. You, you can actually go Rob Rose plus, plus Dragon Strike Blade to kill Pahana, but you can but you can almost come very, very close to doing that. And that's and that's really cool to me. Or you can use Oro plus Dragon Strike Blade to kill another Oro. That's really cool. Um, you can use it to kill most likely whatever whatever one of the two Dragoncraft legendaries are. You can, use it, you can use it to kill Sybil. You can use it to kill a lot of things. That's really really cool because like there's not many there's not many like. Um, overused dragon dragoncraft followers that have that have above like six HP. So 
Uh, so this card's like really cool, um, just because it, it's just very very strong spot removal, making the card overall pretty good. Like if you need ramp, get ramp. If you need removal, get removal. Pretty good, pretty flexible. Next card is Force of the Dragon Newt. So this is the the Breath of Sovereign remake for Dragon, and it's three mana, deal one damage to all enemies, enhance five, deal two damage instead. So notice that one, this is a space, the, the dealing of face damage is actually very, very important. Just because, like, a lot of times how Dragon wins is that they do a lot of, like, incidental face damage to your face, usually while clearing your board from, like, stuff like, say, Israfil. Well, I lied, but, well, stuff like from mainly Israfil. Mainly Israfil. Sometimes Dragon Summoner, sometimes Singer, whatever. They do all this, like, slight, a small, like, chip damage to your face, whatever, which kind of, which kind of puts you into, into range of, of, of other things that they like to do to you, such as, like, say, for example, like, Queen Ozzy Zeus or, like, Queen Ariette or whatever. Things like that. And that's actually a very, very big deal. Now, the Force of Dragon, I know a lot of people have been like, oh my god, this card's shit, or oh my god, this card's amazing. This card's a little bit of both. So, the thing the, the thing I like about this card is that, like, um, Breath of Sovereignty was a strong catch-all across the board. Like, th th there there wasn't there wasn't really, like, like, a single matchup with the exception of, I think, like, Dragon, where Breath of Sovereignty was, well, sorry, with the, with the exception of both Dragon and Haven, and that's because those those two classes don't really play creatures in the first place, where Breath of Sovereignty was, like, actual shit. Um, and that's very, that's very, very big. Whereas, like, with this card, this card has trade-offs. In some matchups, this card's gonna be god, and some, and some matchups, this, this card's gonna be awful. And that's really cool. I, I like it a lot. Um, like, for example, right, right off the board, the, the three, the three mana effect will be good versus shadow, versus sometimes portal, versus, well, portal in very specific circumstances, versus forest, versus blood, versus sometimes sword as well. Whereas, like, the Enhanced 5 will be better versus all of those classes, but also, in addition, will be better versus... Why am I missing a class here? Uh, will be, will be better versus Rune, possibly. And that's, and that's very, very cool to me. Just because, uh, I, I know a lot of people are very, very concerned about, like, well, why, why, why would I would ever play the 3 minute version of this? And, you know, like, like there's, there's gonna be, there's gonna be opportunities for you to do that. And that's very, very strong to me. Uh, I do like that they, that they did actually, like, answer that, like, sort of power vacuum that, like, oh, okay, well, we're releasing about the Sidemender, um, and we're also leaving forever, because if you notice, Look back at Roy, and then and then like look at, at the, some of the other cards that we're about to see. Like they, they kind of like split up what 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 um what both Breath of Sovereign and Forever did into multiple cards, and I like that a lot. Just because you still you still have the effects there, but like we have to pay, we have to play multiple cards in order to get to the effects in the first place, thus making the overall thing weaker while still while still doing the exact well sorry well yeah it makes the availability weaker while still ha while still having like that actual still same effects overall like when you like add everything up together because this, this does like the three man the three damage component this does the two damage aoe and then for the next card the lua of the cheap refs this is going to be like our sort of um our sort of uh this is going to have the draw component of our fervor so Lua the oh uh, for, for those of you wondering, uh, Force of Dragon it will see play largely largely because of the whole well Dragon needs AOE so it's gonna see play anyway Galua of two breaths so it's a five mana four four of into a six six fanfare choose put either a white breath or a black breath into your hand and white breath is two mana draw two cards that's very very strong and then black breath is four mana destroy an enemy follow or an amulet so this card is very very strong i like this card a lot I, I, and i think i think a lot a lot of like dragon players have like have, have like agreed with me as well the reason why this card is great is because like you it's it, it's a it's a dragon card that like sets you up for, for future turns like so for example similar to that dragon summoner however unlike dragon summoner like you you can guarantee pick and choose exactly what it what it is that you want for that turn. Um, for, for, sorry for that like feature turn. Like for example, do you need to draw cards at some point? Okay, cool. There you go. Here's your draw. Do you need do you need to get rid of something off the board? Okay, cool. That like the getting rid of things off the board as well as draw cards. Like both of these are very very strong and they mean so so much. Like for example, one of the issues with dragon right now in this current format is that like be, because is that due to the Baja nerf. As, as as well as like just like things like rotating out, they no longer have have, have answers to to aim the uh, in the way, uh, sorry no they no longer have have uh, have answers in the way of like oh okay well here, here's like your aim at the structure whatever they have to play like uh, the generic like neutral neutral things as everyone else like this is a big deal uh it, it affects a lot of classes but um but, but it's definitely been like an issue for dragon itself just because like in the dragon mirror it means that like, okay well your opponent played tilting uh you have you have your own tilting do they not have lethal if if yes click uh get that free win if no uh, get that x that's very very unfortunate sometimes but galua i like him a lot. i like him a lot just because like he is a nice probably solid replacement to civil mate possibly when civil rotates out um 
just just as far as like you know being being like a five mana play goes. But the other thing is that like again the the, the draw two that's very strong because because dra dragon does love their card draw same as like any deck but the dragon in particular just because this way you get to dig you get to dig yourself out of, out of these like bad hands a lot faster. And then of course the black breath is strong too just because like again if you don't, if you don't need to destroy an amulet you can destroy a creature. And because it's poor mana that's actually a very very big deal because poor mana is, is kind of chump it's kind of like chump change to the dragon. Whereas like five mana or six mana it becomes a, a little bit more hard to do. Um, but I do, I do like that, that there are certain plays you can do with Galua. Like, for example, you can go Galua, Oracle Scyther. That's really strong. You can go Galua, Black Breath, or, and have that be, have that be a play too. Um, you can go, you can go ahead and you can, you can add the White Breath to your hand, not play that turn or some for like whatever reason, because like, say you have to like clear or something like that. And you can go like Ouroboros plus White Breath. That's really cool. Um, you can go Sybil plus Black Breath, things like that. Like it, 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 it just just adds so much, so much power, and so much, so much like diversity to your options. It's like it's actually insane. And and to me, like it, it just kind of blows my mind that like, people are going, oh, well, Gal well Galu is understated. Galu is understated one because like both the effects it gives you are, are ridiculous, and two because it's a drag craft card. Like, do you really want this to be like a five five that your opponent can play in turn four? You don't. Like, not 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 with these types of effects. You don't. Like. <laughs> But overall, the card again is really, really strong. I will definitely see play. Uh, I'm really curious to see what people kind of do with it. But yeah. All right, regenerate spirit. This is the shadow card. Sorry, this is one of the shadow cards. I believe this is like the first or second shadow card that they've shown thus far. So, so, so I'm really looking forward to see, to see like what shadow gets. So it's a two mana, two mana spell. Uh, first effect is reanimate three, and then enhance eight. Then you can also reanimate five. So, so this is kind of explain it better. Uh, with the eight mana one uh, uh, reanimates a three drop, and then also a five drop as well. So I like this card a lot. So. <sighs> As my boy Kiri has, has like mentioned numerous times, it's a mana cheat. You, you can use it uh, to, to revive like to revive either like over over set of creatures, or you can use it just like revive revive creatures um, that cost more mana than they should. Like so, like each time you cast it, it's, assuming assuming you hit a three PP card, you, you're essentially gaining one mana like, like in that turn. That's really cool. Um, the other thing I like about it is that like it doesn't use shadows at all for, for these effects. So like so it's basically a so, so, so in addition to everything else it does, it also it also basically reads gain two shadows because like well gain two shadows with the first form and then gain three shadows with with the second form because of the whole well you bring you bring back a creature that dies again that, that gains your shadow and then, and then casting regenerative spirit also gains your shadow in the first place that's really cool and it helps helps to feed feed necromancy costs which are which are kind of or, which are usually kind of like somewhat somewhat of an issue when we put a shadow. Um, off the top of my head, though, like I don't really particularly know like that that many like good things you can like revive with this card. Uh, let's see, because like usually in a situation like these, like the like the best options usually, usually tend to be like like Lurching Corpse or whatever. But like, well, like Lurching Corpse, Lyrial, Bellinus. But now we don't have like any of those anymore. We we only have like Bellinus, I believe. So it's gonna be like Bellinus, um, Goblin Ogre, I think. I don't I don't remember I don't remember if that's a three drop or not though. And then like skeleton ogre, I, 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 like those like those are, are the ones that like immediately come to my mind as like as like things that are like kind of like overstated or, or you're just like have some kind of like utility effect attached to them that use like one or five. But the other the, the other part about this card that I like a lot is the enhanced eight. I like the enhanced eight because like the enhanced eight most times the, your your five drop is either gonna well at least at least of what we have now. Your five drop is either going to be Aisha or it's going to be like Dark Blade Fiend. I, I like I like this part of that effect a lot, just because of the okay. Well, if you well, if you reanimate the Dark Blade, uh, sorry, if you, if you reanimate the Aisha, you, you get a you, you get a rush unit that can go ahead and like clear out the board and also be a threat because of the whole well, if you're, if, you're, if it somehow it like lives to the next turn and you have an Evo, well, okay, well, well you can possibly just eat ten damage there. Um, but I still like that just because of the whole Shadow has issues with Evos like. They, they, I, as far as I know, they never got a. Oh, okay. Well, we'll just suddenly, just randomly, like regain back an Evo card or anything like that. And then, like, they don't actually have that many rushes. So, like, actually, you can go ahead and you can like Google search like, like in the, like the full like database of, of cards for uh, for rush and then shadow. There's like I think there's definitely like four or five entries total. That's 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 funny and depressing. <laughs> so I like that for this card a lot. Um, Again, you can also revive Dark Leafing possibly and have a ward that also does two damage. That's kind of nice, but um, but largely the, the, the cards the cards are very very strong uh, overall. Like, like it let, lets you make a lot a lot of like really interesting plays. It's also another spell. Spells are kind of fun because you you don't have you don't want to be playing like you know four forty creature deck. Like, it's, it's not always that fun. 
mischievous spirit. So this one is paying for necromancy summon a ghost. So this card is one of the cards that again I know I, I know Kiri likes a lot. Uh, I actually I actually kind of like it myself a little bit. Uh, I, I do however know that a lot of the community has been like oh my god that like this necromancy cost is, is too is too much. Uh, I do and don't think that's the case. So the reason why is because like. The issue that you run into when you're like when you're like playing with like any deck in the game, or uh, as far as just like you know any card game overall, is like is one is too easy for free to do everything they they, they want to do in the first place. Like like there need to be like trade offs at some point. Like um, usually you want you want to, you want to be like kind of like uh, at your lower end and have, and have that be like whatever for your top end, but which is the case here. Like it, when you when we have like necromancy costs that cost like nothing or whatever that I still do like useful things like like in this case you know. A gen summoning, summoning, uh, summoning a ghost or whatever, it makes it so you don't, so you don't have like to worry about the whole. Oh, okay, well, how am I playing my Ektar? Ektar is still is still in rotation, and I'm pretty sure that they're probably gonna make uh, make like make like um, necromancy cost probably like a, probably a little bit like strange until he like leaves rotation. I also like that this card costs uh, costs like three necromancy or whatever, just because like one of the things you, that you can actually do with this card is that you can actually hit your opponent in the face for like nine possibly. If you or not sorry not nine not nine six 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 I'm sorry you can hit your opponent in the face for six if you if you spend if you have like two of these in your hand you're on nine mana you can go like necromancy six get get two get two ghosts then play Ektar and have and have the ghost to the six damage face which is actually a really really cool introduction it's actually one of the interactions that I think people were waiting for for, for quite some time because like I think the the only other way to do that was to was to play. Um, the one mana amulet ghost thing or whatever and then on the like suicide creature and then also have the actor levels very very complicated but, but this is a lot this is a lot like simpler it's like point a and then point b and then you're done um the other thing i like about this is that like you can use it to you can evo this and then suicide the ghost after the ghost goes space which is actually kind of a big deal because a lot of times in similar situations you'd, you'd have to like suicide the, uh, the big creature that you got if you had to like say evolve it and that's, and that's kind of you know detrimental for you for you but uh, but that's kind of cool um Probably lots of like nifty things you can do, and again, like like I said, uh, you can use things like say regenerate spirit in order to build the shadow for it, which I think makes it fine. You can kind of think of it as like say, um, a lesser statted lyrial sort of. Except of course, you know the ping is like not gonna be like a direct ping, which means you, which means you might get uh, cockpit wards, but which, which is like fine. Alright. Next card is Dark Feast Bat. So this is uh, one of the cards I know. Like some people are kind of like uh, excited for, some people are kind of like mad about. Um, all right, so this is a seven mana five five. Wolf is a seven seven. Fan for a deal X damage to an enemy. X equals number of times that you're leaving those damage during during your turn in this match. So this is basically a finisher type card for like suicide blood decks. However, at the moment, the only like real like suicide blood decks that really exist is just like Jormungan. Although I do know in, in limited sometimes people play like suicide blood aggro. It's, it's really weird. Anyway, so for this card, this card is one of those cards that like on paper is really good. However, it's uh, however like one of the issues with it is that it suffers fierce competition. Even if it were six mana, it was, it was separate competition from Jorm, but but because it's seven mana, it suffers it suffers intense competition from that of Emeralda. Um, just because like Emeralda, like it it can't go face. Well, sorry, sorry. Let me clarify. It can't always go face, but it has the opportunity to, to sometimes go face. And also, additionally, um, it'll it will always you know do like the base. Okay, just like just blow something up thing or whatever, which is always fine. Whereas like say Dark Feast that if you're not going or whatever. Uh, Dark Feast for that can, can potentially deal zero, like, obviously that's gonna be, like, super rare, but, like, but there's a chance they can, like, deal zero or just, you know, not deal enough. Um, yes, it can go face. However, the issue with Jormagon Blood, uh, sorry, the, the thing about Jormagon Blood decks is that, like, they never really need help going face, because, like, because once you get your Jormagon and then also you're not going or whatever, you usually just kind of win if you can, like, solve the game long enough. Um, w w like, which, which, which puts this card in a little bit of an awkward spot. Now, granted, you could maybe say double down and then also play this in addition to... to uh, Tamarola, but that seems like really greedy because because then you're just playing like um, multiple six and seven drops that kind of like that uh, that kind of like struggle to do multiple things unless you have Evos, and that's like kind of questionable. I do think you might play this card possibly, like for example, uh, like all right. So, so there's a version of Drumming Gun that, that plays like neutrals, and then like I think the only blood followers that they play are Knock, Carabos, and I think. Sorry, 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 not Jormagon, and I think they play the, um, the, the two, two guy as well. Like, so you might play it in something like that, possibly. Um, 
in which you just like take on the TT gun and just like put in Dark Feast that instead. Uh, oh, the, they also play Bathmas, so that, uh, that's why they do that, because they play Bathmas so we search those out. Anyway, so you might do that. Um, but, I don't, but I don't know. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't really know where I see this card. Uh, I, supp I suppose for me personally, where I see this card is that like, I don't know uh, how many people, how many people like knew this, but like, at one point, there was a Control Blood deck, I, I believe like a few, a few, uh, a few months ago, where well, not really a few months ago. Well, yeah, like a few months ago, where that like that like played knack, right? It played knack, and then also just like played played like a bunch of heals or whatever, and and, and just like one because you just like slowly kind of like grinded your opponent out. So like it might see play in that kind of deck because that, that deck also like played a lot of heals in order to, like kind of like offset the whole whole well, knack is like hitting you in the face thing. Because once once this card can hit you in the face for five. Or even just, or even probably just four, it becomes a very, it becomes a very, very scary card. Now, now when this card hits you for ten, you're gonna feel it. You're gonna be very, very salty. Um, again, I'm pretty sure this can happen to me at some point. I don't know when, but but like I promise you, when it does, I will clip it because it's gonna be funny. Well, for you guys, not not so much for me. Um, but the card's still, it's still really, it's still really cool. I like the artwork a lot. I I, I like the concept that they're giving for it too. I, I think I think the only thing that I dislike is that like it, it probably doesn't work and it probably doesn't work in and of itself with Storm. That's fine. Like, okay, because, because, like, because you might, you might be able to just, like, make, like, knock more so, like, a, more so a standalone, a standalone thing with this guy, and that's, and that's kind of cool. Next card is Vanya Nightshade Vampire. So this is a card that, a lot, that I know a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people are, are excited for. If you have at least six play points, uh, Avengers, Avengers is active for you, choose, play this card as either a Kind Queen Vanya or a Blood Queen Vanya. And then if it's not, and of course if you if you can't play if you can't play an vengeance, you, you like just get fanfare, dual two damage to both leaders, and some more force that. So the base form is a little, is a little bit less good. Like it's still kind of good because the whole it does it does do two damage, and sometimes you know doing two damage is just enough. Um, but yeah, like it's a six mana three six of so also to a five eight. Like this this is a very 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 tanky stat line because like um to, so to kind of like put it put it into put it into perspective for you. Um, the only card, the only card off the top of my head that has like, that has like a similar stat line, sorry, the only two cards that has, has a similar stat line for this, for this, for about this mana cost, is both, is both Felice, who evolved into, who evolved into a 4-7, and then also, um, Saphira, who, who, who evolved into a 4-9. Like and and, nor, and for those of you who have, who have been able to like play this in tempo, you, you know that like a lot of times if it's on a clear board, your opponent your opponent struggles to, to get rid of these cards, and that's gonna be probably the same thing here. So these are the cheese forms. The first form is Kind Queen Vania. This one is Drain. Uh, drain one on one on evolve. Fan first on the force that whenever an ally, and that's very very important because because of the next turn we'll be talking about. But but whenever an ally force back comes in play, give it ward. And then evolved, it has strain and the same thing. So this card is really strong. I like this card a lot, particularly for like for like say vengeance blood decks, uh, just because it's a it's a very very it's a very very tanky tanky answer to, to, to getting rid of a lot of things. The, the other the, the, the nice thing I like about, I like about this in particular is that it has ward. Now a big thing about blood is that as at the moment with, with the cards that they currently have, a lot a lot of times what happens is that they usually say is that they usually say go. Depending on the list, they usually say go like Blood Moon into 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 Belphegor, into like Scarlet, and then and then you say play this card on like six or whatever. This card's really annoying because like because both this card and Scarlet they they kind of form it as like as like a very very strong like mid game wall breaker. And then the Scarlet usually goes like three for one or whatever, clears the entire board. Then you play this girl, then she's like tanky, she's behind a ward. Then they play Scarlet. Uh, sorry, then they play Emerald in the turn after that. You kind of just lose. This is a very very strong ideal curve. Um, because obviously, like, you're probably, you're probably not gonna be able to play the buff for it, and then all this card that and have this still be, and have you still be avengers. I mean, it's possible, but it's unlikely. Um, but, like, that, that's still a pretty strong curve when it happens, and even, and even when it does happen again, that she's still really tanky. Um, and of course, we'll be talking about, about the next version, Blood Queen Vania. So this one is Storm. Summon a for fan first summon a force bat whenever an allied, and again that's important. Whenever an allied force bat comes into play, give it bane. So this card is also really it's also really strong just because again, a five eight storm that's hitting that's hitting you in the dome, and then then, then they also get a bane in as well. That's really strong. That's that's really strong and really, really annoying. Because one of the things you can do with it is that like 
is that you can just like use the, you, you can just like use the base one as a three six, then like maybe say evolve, evolve the bane bat, and then go ahead and, and clear off the unit. A three six is still is still pretty difficult to remove. Like for example, you need to be playing a class that has that has a four X unit in order to be able to in order to be able to evolve it, where four is the attack. And not many classes can say that. Like for example, dragon can't really say that. Uh, yeah, because because dragon mainly just has civil, and then they have saha. But, but oh hey, saha is very taken, so you can't really say that anymore. Uh, Force can say that. Shadow, not so much. Uh, they kind of they kind of struggle with like deal, dealing with weakness like this, unless of course they had a board in the first place, which is you know that's possible, but like unlikely. Um, sword again, uh, gonna, gonna be kind of difficult, but it is possible. It is possible for sword, but it's gonna be kind of difficult. Um, Portalcraft can do it. Uh, Havencraft will struggle a little bit. Man, like. So that's that's kind of a very very big deal. Like just just because like it presents two different threats. Both of the threats are really really obnoxious because like one has Bane, but the other one just hit me in the face for five, and it's very very tanky. So so I like these cards. I like I like both. The, I like almost all three of these forms a lot. Like I don't particularly think I like the base form that much, but again, it's still fine because it's still you know smarts and whatever. Uh, so this card will definitely see a lot of play. Probably probably a ton of play. Um, to put, just because again like it it, 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 it does it, like uh it, the vengeance forms do do things that you want them to do like and they're all and they're all relevant I, like i think i think the only one that's like le that's like slightly not relevant is the whole bane bat thing but even then that's still fine like it's, it's still just really really annoying for, for people to deal with most likely um just because like you you give your opponent a lot of different opportunities to mess up when you give your opponent a lot of different opportunities to mess up and they do mess up and you capitalize on that you probably just win the game in the spot so Next card is gift for, gift for Bloodkin. So this card is is a zero cost. Wow, zero cost um, for <laughs> for Bloodcraft. So this is deal one damage to both leaders, then some other force back for both leaders. So I like this card a lot. Um, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not quite sure exactly how the how the effect is is going to is going to apply. Like for example, is it going to is it going to do everything all at once? So this way it procs the drumming gun, or or will it do the damage first, then proc the drumming gun, then some of the bat? Like these are very, very relevant questions, although I don't have the answers to it, although I don't have the answers to them. However, I can speculate on uh, on, on what happens at either or. Like for example, if it if it does everything all at once, and, and, and then uh, like if it does both, if it does, yeah, if it does both its both its effects all at once, and then and then, and then it does drumming on effects, which, which how I think it's gonna resolve. That basically just means that like when you're under drumming on, this is this, this, like a this is like a zero PP activator that also gets rid of the bat in the first place. Because most times this card is going to be bad where you're, where you're not using it to combo. Like for example. When you're not, when you're not using it for jarring on, or, or you're not using it to, to say, I don't know, make, make something like weird, like uh, weird, like uh, soul dominator, soul dominator, yeah, soul dominator play working, or, or some other weird like uh, Vania play working, or whatever. It's gonna be like pretty bad. But when, when you do, when you can do these, this card is gonna be ridiculous. Like for example, a combo that I saw, I saw matches to me like yesterday was that okay, you can actually go Vania, Vania. Evolve Avania, then, then play, then play two gifts of Blackkins, and then do like six damage to your opponent. <laughs> like, <laughs> granted, you needed like four cards in the process, but, but still being able to do like six damage to your opponent, wow, that's like all effect damage from the class that also has Razor Claw and Emerald, and just like all these like ambient sources of damage. That's pretty ridiculous. This is also pretty funny too. Um, again, you can use a drumming on. You can also use, use a Soul Dominator. Like a, a, a play that like my board Kiri, I think I think it was Kiri that thought of. Was you can go ahead and get you can go banner snatch to grab soul dominator, uh, then play like three gifts of bloodkins, and then also play a, a demonic storm. Uh, so this way your opponent just, your opponent just ate a guaranteed assuming they had no other creatures in play a guaranteed thirteen damage, like uh, six sorry not is it thirteen damage. Oh my bad, I think it's actually 16 damage, I'm sorry. Um, cause like, right, so, you eat... My bad, no, no, no I'll, 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 try, I'll, I'll try the first one, it's, it's 13, alright. So, you eat three, you eat three, three, yeah, you eat three from the bat, then you eat three more from the, from the, from the Mog Storm, so that's currently six. Six bats died, so you get, so you get ten, so you get, yeah, so you get ten damage to the Soul Dominator. Um... No, not that. It's actually 20, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah. 
lot, lots, lots, of, lots of ridiculous cards, uh, lots of ridiculous combos for this card to, get, to, to, ha to make happen. But I like th that, that the way the card works is that, like, even though people are going, it's, it's going to be, like, insane for aggro. I don't think it's going to be insane for aggro, uh, unless, of course, you get that exact like thing in your high roll. The reason why I don't think it's going to be insane for aggro is because the whole, well, when you think about it, the card the card is, is a is a plus is a plus zero because you guys both get something. However, in reality, it's, it's usually going to be more more of like a minus for you because of the whole well you, you give your opponent a bat to a bat to, to trade into your bat for free, uh, or or even possibly like use it to, to trade into like say other creatures that you have, and that's kind of a big deal. Like, will the one damage be enough? I don't think so, but who knows? It remains to be seen. All right, next card is Opposing Statues. This card is, is gonna be the Havencraft card. Uh, Fanfare, choose summon either a Holy Fowl or, of Ivory or, or Hex Spell of, of Ebon. Uh, countdown to last words, put a, put a, yeah, put an Opposing Statues into your hand if you have three or less cards in, in your hand. All right, so the first one is gonna be the, ho the Holy Fowl of Ivory. This one is basically, is literally just, just an offensive, um, offensive version of, what's it called? Offensive version of Octo Bishop, aka Octo Dad. Now, I actually don't think that this version is actually that good, um, just because, like, at least with Octo Dad, Octo Dad has that four base four, four base HP when unevolved. That's actually kind of a big deal, just because, like, most things that Octo Dad would hit into usually usually kill usually kill uh, whatever whatever creature it was, with the with the, with I think like the exact exception of like four X creatures. Um, whereas, like, say, with Holy, with Holy Foul, you, you always feel pretty bad if you don't evolve the Holy Foul. I mean, granted, you, you do feel pretty bad if you don't evolve the Octopus, but you, I think you feel more bad if you don't evolve the Holy Foul. Um, and then, of course, the, the Hex Foul of, e, of Ebon, it's, uh, 4 mana, 2, 3, it lost it to a 4, 5, and then it just has Thorn. So, <sighs> So, so I think the card is like pretty. It's pretty cool. The thing I like about the card a lot is that like you can use it to generate, uh, to, uh, to, to just like kind of gain gain the advantage if you somehow run out of cards in hand. Now, I know uh, my uh, my boy Elliot asked, uh, well, how, how does Haven run out? How how exactly is Haven gonna run out of cards in hand? And that's a really good question. But uh, but no, like it's possible because I actually said the same thing for Portalcraft. But the other day, my opponent was able to play the um, to play the two PP Puppet Girl. And he, he, he had that die three times, and he, he got it back all three times. That was pretty funny. So, I, I think the card will be alright. Uh, I, I like that there's a storm unit. That can, that's kind of cool. It, it, like, it doesn't do as much damage as, say some, say, some of the other birds that you would get. Like, like say, for example, it doesn't do as much as, as Holy Falcon. That's fine, just because, like, it, it's something, I guess. Like, and, and, and ha just having something is better than having nothing. The next card is Dirk, Steel Arm Battler. So this is a 5 mana, 5-3, five, if it falls into a 7-5, Portalcraft Silver. Okay, so they, fi they finally fixed the text. They finally fixed the, fix the text. So this one is, is a stand for put a random artifact that costs at least 3 play points from your deck into your hand. Um, so before it, it just said that, that, that like that like it created and not actually that it, like it added or whatever. And that was, and that was kind of you know a point of contention because like, I, again, my boy Elliot was like, well, they don't really make this or whatever. So again, you know, apolog apologies to, tell you that, to, yeah, to Elliot because you know a lot of people doubted him or whatever. Um, but this card is kind of cool. I will this card you play? I don't know. So the viability of this card hinges on whether or not they can actually make mystic artifacts actually viable. However, one, however, one of the nice things about this card is that like you can use it to grab radiant artifacts if you somehow only if you're somehow able to only make radiant artifacts with your deck. That's actually very very nice. Um, you can use it in the exact same vein as you would use Otherworld Drift. However, this is like, however, this gives you selective searching, and also because it's a creature, creatures are generally going to be better than spells because, like, a spell can't, a spell can usually not go face, whereas a creature can always somehow go face if it, if it manages to live, and that's actually a very, very big deal. Um, like again, it, like it, 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 it's mainly just going to serve the, the same purpose as Otherworld Drift. However, the you know, it's also gonna have the same weaknesses as other world person that like it costs five mana to do this you're not getting any of the mana back and you're almost and you're almost assuredly not going to be able to play the card you got off of this card in the same turn that's kind of a big deal but i don't know like it might it might be worth it if we, if we somehow like wean ourselves off of off of playing like off of playing like accelerating based decks but i don't know if that's ever going to happen oh sorry if that's ever going to happen this year uh before like nerfs or whatever so. 
and then the last card, Rock Knuffles. So this is deal three damage, sorry, TPP, deal three damage to an enemy follower. If there, if there are any artifact cards in your hand, randomly discard one of them and deal six damage instead. So now people are going like, boo, boo, like, um, discard portal or whatever, that's like not gonna be good or whatever. This card isn't really a discard card. All right, let, let me try to break. This card doesn't really propagate like a, oh, okay, we're just gonna play like discard portal or whatever. No, like it's just a single standalone discard or whatever to, to, gain, to, gain, to gain like a boosted effect. And that's pretty good. Like two, damage, two, two mana deal six is very, very strong. Like, um, again, uh, if we, if we look back or whatever, there was actually a similar card that like did, that, that, that did this for like similar conditions and that, and that card got there. Granted, it got nerfed for a different reason for a for, for, for like, I don't think this card will get nerfed, but like, it still got nerfed. Um, like, like this card is just, it's just pretty strong at what, at what it does. Like, two, two mana deal three is already pretty good. Like, it, 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 it's already, you know, one step, one step above the curve over Dimension Cut. Because the big issue with Dimension Cut is like, you can't always just, just say, okay, well, I'm just magically always going to be in residence when I need to be in residence. That's not going to happen. Like, there, there are a lot of, like, awkward times that happen sometimes with Portal Craft. Um, but with this card, like, if you have if you have the, the artifact that discards, sometimes you might, sometimes you might not. It, it like it'll be it'll be great when you do. Like for example, one of the, one of the big issues with Porter Craft is that like they do struggle when you when you put like a random like, like stand on just like giant fatty in the way. Because again, a lot of people have kind of like weaned themselves off of playing other world drift because other world other world drift is pretty bad because it's negative tempo. Um, but this card, but this card kind of you know helps helps helps, helps like alleviate that issue because like because for those of you who've been playing Portal Craft for a while, you'll remember that the how like at the start of this meta game, um, they were pretty. Oh sorry, at the, start, at the start of last month. I'm sorry, at the start of last month, they were pretty bad versus dragons. Like they just like, they just kind of played the Bahamut. The Bahamut is literally too big for them to handle because they need they needed to have so many things in order to suicide in order to kill the Bahamut that like that, a lot of times they just kind of did work and then they just kind of died afterwards. Well, this, well cards like these help you get around things like that. So I think so I think the card will definitely see play. Uh, for those of you who are playing Dimension Cut, you'll just play Rock and Knuckles instead. That was pretty good. Yeah, uh, but this concludes my my like part one of this like set review. I'll definitely review all the cards as as, as they come out. Well, I'll definitely try to review all the cards as they come out. I'll either do it on YouTube or I'll, I'll just do it on, on, on like my um, or, like my Twitch channel. Uh, so if, if you're looking for those, you know, go ahead and like stop by. If you enjoyed the video, go and like, like, go and hit the subscribe button. 